It was written not to be preached standing. And I was trying to figure out how I was going to move this podium out of the way so that I could get on my knees and preach this message. And, and I didn't know that it was going to be this thick up in here today. I had no idea. But I got to be obedient to what the Lord told me to do. get where I'm supposed to be. This is where I'm supposed to be, right here. My wife, she loves Travis Green. He, he's got a song, and it's called Here For You. And in that song, he, he opens up with, who can stand in this holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to what is false and doesn't swear deceitfully. He will receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. And that song comes straight out of Psalm 24. Clean hands, pure Clean hands, pure hearts. Is there anybody here that has clean hands and a pure heart? So he cries out in that song. He says, Lord, give us clean hands and a pure heart. Give it to us, Lord. We can't get clean hands on our own. They ain't soap good enough. Clorox can't get the filth off of our hands. In a pure heart. But Psalm 24 doesn't just, just talk about us getting these clean hands and, and pure hearts. But it talks about the king of glory. And he says in verse 7, he says, lift up your head. O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. He says, lift up your heads, O gates, and lift them up, O ancient doors, and the king of glory may come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. Selah. Man, who do you bow down to but a king? All of you are sitting in places of authority. You're in your seats. But God told me to get down on your knees in a place of submission. You ain't preaching down to nobody. You're on the same level. And if God had his way, if we had kneelers in here, all y'all would be on your knees receiving this message right here with me. Because when we get to Revelation chapter 6, this is the place that we've all been waiting for. It's the place where everybody's getting ready to bow down before the king of kings. Who can stand? Who has a right to stand when the lamb shows up? In 1999, I was in the same place on my knees, crying out to Jesus, saying, Lord, if you read, I remember it plain as day down in Pendleton, South Carolina, on my knees, crying out to Jesus, and here I am again. This is the first time I've ever preached on my knees. But the Lord said, you're going to show something today. Amen. Revelation 6 and 15, it says, And the kings of the earth and the great ones and the generals and the rich and the powerful and everyone, slave and free, hid themselves in the caves and among the rocks of the mountain. Oh, wow. The mighty can't stand before him. The rich can't stand before him. The powerful can't stand before him. There is nobody down here that can stand before the king of kings and the lord of lords. You can think of the richest person on the planet, the most powerful person on the planet. 
Those people that you look up to and respect and adore, they can't stand before the king. The most fierce football player, the, the mightiest wrestler that you know, can't stand before our king. Do you think that you can stand before him? Do you think that you can go face to face with the Lamb of God, with Jesus Christ? Psalm 76 says, but you are to be feared. Who can stand before you when once your anger is roused? We are so used to seeing <laughs> Jesus humble, meek, and mild. We're so used to seeing Jesus healing and, and, and touching and, and consoling and comforting. We have never seen Jesus like this. In Revelation 6, John gives a revelation of Jesus that we've only seen glimpses of. When he came into the temple and he cleansed the temple and it says he turned the tables of the money changers over. We saw a glimpse of Jesus in his wrath. But in Revelation 6, he opens up a full can of you know what. We in church. But when I saw this, Revelation 6, and, and, and I saw the horsemen coming out one by one, I, 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 it took me back to the days when my grandfather on Saturday morning would be watching wrestling, and the four horsemen would come out in that ring, and they would go to brawl. It would be a mighty big fight. And, 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 and man, the way my grandmother would be watching that, I thought it was the realest thing in the world. I didn't know that it wasn't real. But when we get to Revelation 6, this is the real deal. Jesus shows up with the seven seals, and he's the only one that can open the seals. And boy, what a day it's going to be. Can you imagine everybody that's ever bullied you, everybody that's ever done you wrong, everybody that's ever stabbed you in the back, Everybody that's ever lied on you, everybody that's ever done anything against you or against your God, Jesus is getting ready to unload on them. Nobody can stand before him, but anybody who tries to is getting ready to be obliterated and be destroyed. Deuteronomy 9 and 3 says, Know therefore today that he who goes over before you as a consuming fire is the Lord your God. He will destroy them and subdue them before you so you shall drive them out and make them perish quickly as the Lord has promised you. We serve a warrior God, a mighty God. He's a consuming fire and he's ready to consume everybody who will stand against him. Revelation 6 and 14, it says the sky vanished like a scroll that is being rolled up and every mountain and island was removed from its place. Not only can the mighty men not stand against him, but not even the greatest mountains can stand against him. I don't care if it's Mount Vesuvius or Mount Rushmore or Yosemite. You can go to all the highest mountains, Mount Everest. They cannot stand against the Lord. He's not just bringing men down, but he says, I'm bringing the mountains down. We've been talking about God being a mountain mover, but he's being a mountain remover. It says the mountains are going to be gone and everything is going to vanish. <laughs> like a scroll being rolled up. The people in verse 16 of chapter 6, it says they're going to call to the mountains and rocks and say, fall on us. Hide us from the face of him who is seated on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. There's two that they're afraid of. The one that's sitting on the throne, which is Elohim. In the Lamb of God who was slain. And I love that the Lamb, when he, slows, when he shows up, he doesn't show up with a big warrior suit. He shows up with his blood. The revelation says that when the, when the Lamb showed up, he showed up as a Lamb that was slain. He still had the blood on him as a reminder. This blood was for you. This blood was shed for you. And you have the audacity to stand against me. Psalm 121 is called one of the Psalms of Ascent. He says, I lift up my eyes unto the hills. In the Hebrew, it's hard, which can mean hill or mountain. He says, I lift up my eyes to the hills or the mountains. From where does my help come? The question the psalmist asks, and then he answers his own question. He says, my help doesn't come from the mountain. 
My help doesn't come from the high place. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. So when the mountains go away, I'm not concerned. When the mountains crumble, I'm not worried. When the mountains fall down, I'm excited because I know that the Lord is my helper. There were so many people that were shocked when the people that lived up in the mountains of North Carolina were under water. How can you be up high on the mountain and end up under water? And where is your help going to come from now? They said it's going to take years to restore some of the roads and some of the damage and some of the destruction. And Jesus could have stopped it, but he didn't. God could have, he could have held the winds back because that's what he does, but he didn't. He says in Isaiah that, that he, he measures the bounds of the coastline. He can stop the waters from, from going so far, but he didn't. He allowed it to happen. You who are still alive, you should be thankful and grateful that his wrath was not extended even more. Revelation 6 and 17 says, for the great day of their wrath has come, and who can stand? Whenever there's a, a fire They tell you that if you get fired on you, you're supposed to stop, drop, and roll. But I guarantee you on that day, ain't enough stopping, ain't enough dropping, enough rolling to stop the fire that's coming. The only thing that can stop it is to accept the lamb and be on the lamb's side and get up underneath the altar. Because when he opens up the first and the second and the third and the fourth seal, all of this destruction happens. But when he opens the fifth seal, it shows up those who were slain that are under the altar waiting, saying, Lord, how long, how long must we wait? He says, but not yet. See, the mighty ones can't stand, and the mountains can't stand, but the martyrs can't stand either. The ones who died for the faith, the ones who believed in Jesus, they can't stand, just not yet. We got to get to chapter 7 for that. But in chapter 6, when the wrath shows up, when the fury shows up, you stay where you are. In Isaiah 26, he says he will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. Even though there's chaos all around, even though the mountains are falling, even the world is being destroyed, he says, keep your mind on me. When the ocean was raging and Peter was out there walking on the water, he looked at the waves and he started to sink. God is saying, don't look at the waves. Don't look at the chaos and the destruction. Don't look at the earthquake. Because when he opened up that sixth seal and the earthquake started, and, and, and earthquakes can happen in different ways. See, an earthquake on land is something that you got to worry about stuff falling on you. But an earthquake on the water, oh my goodness, tsunami. Yeah, the waves start coming in. The ones who shed innocent blood those people are going to pay. The people who did wrong to you, those people are going to pay. The people who didn't live right, those people are going to pay. All of us have sinned and all of us have fallen short. Don't get it twisted. But the ones who have repented and said, Lord, forgive me. Lord, I was wrong. Lord, I know that it was the devil that was using me. I want you to use me now. He says, one day you'll be able to stand. He gave them white robes. He said, here's your white robe, but you can't stand just yet. Just hang on a little while longer. He says that they were under the altar. And I don't know about you, but it's kind of hard to stand up under the altar. But they were up under the altar because they had been slain for the witness of God. They cried out with a loud voice, verse 10, O God, sovereign and true, how long will it be for you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? See, everybody on the earth has got to pay for what they did to the righteous. If you're walking righteous and you've been abused and you've been been criticized and and people have done things to you, don't worry, God is going to deal with those people. He says in Romans 12, 19, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. I will repay. If you believe God is going to repay, keep your mouth off of people. Don't don't try to get them back. He, He said, I came not to bring peace on earth. Jesus said, but I came to bring a sword. Jesus said, I came to bring a sword. 
You know what a sword does, what? A sword destroys, a sword cuts. He said, this is what I came to bring to the earth. Jesus came to bring the sword. He, he can handle your enemies. He's pretty good with that sword, too. He's been doing it for a long time. He says in verse 11, this is for us. He says, each were given a white robe and told to rest a little longer. Just be still. It ain't time for you to stand up yet. Until the number of their fellow servants and their brothers should be complete, who were to be killed as they themselves had been. encourage you if you're concerned about what's going on in the world right now guess what it's going to get worse if you're concerned about what's going on in the world right now there's going to be more of it this is a time for us to focus on Jesus Christ the lamb he, he wants you to know if you humble yourself if you bow down before him he will cover you he will keep you. He'll cover you like a mountain can't cover you. He'll cover you like a house can't cover you. See, when there's a tornado, they teach us to get down and tuck and put our hands over our heads. But, but that ain't protecting you. Your hands, and your, your hands can't protect you from a house falling on you. Your, your hands and your arms can't protect you from a car. I watched one of the tornadoes in Florida. They showed where a car was parked in the driveway, and the car was 40 yards away. A big, giant truck. These things weigh thousands of pounds. And you think tucking down in the corner with your hand over your head is going to save you when the wrath comes? You better have a relationship with Jesus. You better know the one who can save you. You better know the one who can keep you and preserve you. And if you do die, just know that your soul as well. That your name is written in the book. When we get to verse Revelation 7, you'll be able to see him standing. And you'll know what the robe's all about. And you'll know what the 144,000 is all about. But for right now, I just need y'all to kneel with me. I just need two or three people who need God to do something. You feel the enemy trying to attack you. You feel something going on, but you need to kneel and bow before the king right now. Just as an act of submission and trust. I know some of y'all say, man, I can't get down on my knees like that, Pastor. My, it, it hurt to get on my knees. Yeah, it does. God, he wants you to feel this. It, it's something about getting on your knees. It ain't easy. Some of y'all say, I don't know if I can get back up. But he will help you get back up if you can get down. If you'll get down on your knees and trust God, when the wrath comes, when the fury comes, you won't have to worry about a thing. You won't have to cover your head because he's going to cover your head. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you. I, I, I don't know who can stand when the turf earthquake comes or when the tornado comes. I don't want to be trying to stand. But it's coming. The Lord said it's coming. Some of us are going to die. For the faith, some of us are going to die for what we believe in. I don't know if I'm going to be one of them, but I got to be prepared. When that sword comes down on my neck, I got to know that my soul is with Jesus. And, and, and when, when your soul and your mind is fixed on Jesus, you don't worry about anything. I, I don't understand how Jesus hung up on that cross. He had to have his mind focused on something else. I don't know how he let them pierce him in the side. His, his mind had to be focused on something else. I don't know how he let them do all of the spitting and the mocking. But it was because of his love for us. He loved us more than the spitting and the mocking. He loved us more than the blood and the pain. He loved us more than that. Who do you love that you'll get on your knees for him, that you'll endure this for a little while, for a season? God, we're your people. We are on our knees, not trying to look pious because it don't feel good down here, Lord. But we're here because we recognize that we are under your authority, that nobody can come against you. The bill collectors can't come against you. The presidents and the authorities in this nation can't come against you. World leaders can't come against you. As long as we stay under your authority, 
As long as we stay under your leadership and your protection, we don't have to worry about a thing. God, we know that worry is something from this world. Anxiety is something from this world. We have perfect peace in you. We may not have peace down here, but we have peace in you. So even though all around us is sinking sand, people are losing their lives and losing their jobs, people are against one another, people are fighting one another, people are going around doing evil and ripping one another off, people are scamming one another, Father God, down here. But in you, we have peace. We don't expect this world to give us peace because we know Satan right now is, is the authority. But we recognize, Lord, that you said in Psalm 24, you said that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. So even though Satan has authority for a season, we recognize that in Revelation 6, the eviction started. And when you came with the eviction notice and you told Satan that your time is up down here, that I'm kicking you out and all of your demons out, and everybody that's followed you was going out because I've got a new plan for earth, and I've got a new plan for heaven, and I'm thankful and grateful, God, that ev eviction is coming for Satan, that he's going to be evicted out of our hearts and our minds, he's going to be evicted off of this planet, and it's going to be made brand new. Thank you, Jesus, for taking the authority back. Thank you, Jesus, that he doesn't have authority over our souls, but only over our body. Yes, Satan, you can afflict us with cancer. You can afflict us with AIDS, but you can't take our soul and our spirit. Thank you, Jesus, for the spirit of God in this place on today. Thank you, God. For your spirit at work in the church right now, God, through all the persecution, through all the tribulation, through all the tests and trials, we will stand one day. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.